era l'inverno, o meglio si era all'inizio del 1944 a Venezia. Quel pomeriggio Tarcisio gli aveva detto «Il mio nome è presso il Comitato di Liberazione e Tarcisio, sono medico. Il capo mi ha, mi ha mandato a dirti che qui non sei più sicuro. Stasera alle sette in punto verrà a prenderti Priscilla. Da dove li avete pescati fuori questi nomi?» e gli chiese. Sorrise, siamo in epoca di catacombe, disse Tarcisio, facendosi severo, e noi siamo un gruppo di cattolici. Il capo, che non è cattolico, si chiama Achille, soggiunse. E tu? È meglio che anche tu abbia un nome di occasione. Serve solo a noi, dal resto, ad avere nomi così, siamo appena in due. Gli altri due sono preti, precisò umilmente, quasi arrossendo, e i loro nomi sono veri, non d'occasione. Thus begins the novel, Le Notti della Paura, published, as you've now heard a few times, uh, by Feltrinelli in 1967. And bear in mind that this, this is toward the end of Barolini's life, since he's going to be dead by January of 1971. And that the second novel of Resistance, from 1969, is really right up to the threshold of the end of his life. And going back to some of the uh, expressions of Professor Kamuri from his uh, discussion, uh, indeed, one of the things that I really uh, began to see so strongly in these novels is that in his maniera defilata, this was always a man of resistance, in that he resisted everything. <laughs> and uh, he, was, he, was, he had as his basic character not wanting to belong to a church, in the sense of you said, le due chiese del mondo uh, of the after, in the after war. In this novel, his name, he is a Latin teacher. His, his nome di occasione is Gir, from Girardengo, because he was forced to flee by bicycle. His Catholic faith has none of the clarity of Tarcisio's, and Tarcisio may be an avatar of Giuliolo. I will leave it to you to, to, to be more precise about that. And he has been sentenced by the local fascist party of his provincial city and has gone underground in Venice, where he is moved by the partisans from apartment to apartment in an ominously labyrinthine, fog-covered city that seems made for clandestine activity. Unable even to show himself at the window, cut off from his family and his friends, he falls into a desperate love affair with his partisan protector, the aristocratic and wealthy Maria, a.k.a. Priscilla, who is passionate about human frailty and disease, like the tumors that she studies under the microscope. Sexual thraldom is the correlative of political thraldom in this novel. For the non-English non speakers, thraldom would mean like slavery, uh, being under thrall to something. And indeed, when I read this novel in my 20s, shortly after my father's death, I was really put off by the amount of sexuality in it. And it was one of the reasons I couldn't, I couldn't really come to terms with it. But I think I've got that now. So the nightly sex that Giard experiences induces a fear and loathing hence Le Notti della Paura, that is rooted in his Catholic sense of sin and that reflects the impotency and abjectness that he feels on a daily basis as a fugitive from the apparatus of the state. His sexual humiliation is reinforced by his immobility. He is caged within the house while Priscilla is free to come and go and take partisan lovers on the outside and eventually even to bring her lovers home including one who is the opposite of a partisan, the German officer from whom she obtains a case of otherwise unobtainable vodka for her beloved alcoholic father, the half-Russian, half-Venetian Conte Gaspare. A taxonomy of human weakness, Le Notti della Paura ends with the old count consoling himself, not with sex like his daughter, but in un orgia di autentica vodka, conservata in una liscia cassetta marcata di svastiche nere. Trapped inside, Gir takes refuge in thought and moral analysis, convinced that he, Priscilla, and all the others have been deformed by the political corruption in which they are immersed. He tries to combat his inability to exert agency over the sexual swamp in which he finds himself by imagining that he will save Priscilla from her frenetic sexuality and eventually marry her, although it is not clear whether his Catholic bourgeois moral categories would co correspond to her desires even in a post-war period. At the same time, his moral principles dignify and ground him so that when Priscilla eventually seduces the virginal warrior Tarcisio 
and that was the correspondence that was so strong with the, de with the description of, of Giuliolo. When Priscilla eventually seduces Tarcisio down the hall from the room that she and Giard have been sharing, Giard refuses to perform the culturally sanctioned response of male rage and hatred. And his refusal is itself a form of agency, of civilizing force, of strength. Non odio nessuno, dice Giard, te lo detto. Non sono un caprone, non un toro, ma un uomo civile. La scelta non è più in me, né in te adesso. La scelta è solo in lei, se vorrà scegliere. And I said to myself, good for you, papa. <laughs> Catholicism in Le Notti della Paura inhabits a complex duality. It is both the soil from which grow the rank fruit of fear and humiliation, but also the soil in which the strong oak of conscience sinks its roots. This is the case in both of Barolini's accounts of the resistance, where on the one hand, Catholicism is savagely critiqued. I can't underscore that enough, it is. The sterility of its traditions and rituals constantly called to task for making personal morality only harder to achieve in a time of crisis rather than easier. But on the other hand, the work of the partisans to which these novels offer a remarkable personal witness, this work is born of their Catholicism. That's why I read you the opening passage. Noi siamo cattolici, those were the partisans speaking. This work is born of their Catholicism and lived in the spirit of that religion's most radical and sacrificial teachings. And indeed, in these works, Catholicism and resistance are synonymous. The fascists suspect all priests. Voi intellettuali siete come i preti. Avete il tradimento connaturato nella materia stessa del vostro cervello. The partisans expect each other to be Catholic. When one announces, non partecipo più alla vita cattolica, the leader comments, laico, ma sempre antifascista. When arrested, Stefano begins to break down his fascist captor by asking him, lei del resto, non è nato cristiano anche lei? To which the reply is, sono fascista. So the dichotomy is clear. The Catholics are the partisans. The fascists are not Catholics. 